today we'll look at the aftermath of a nuclear war. Uh, and now I'm looking, of course, at a full war, a uh, full-on war between uh, the Russian Federation and NATO forces. And uh, how bad will it be? Will, those, will we go the way of the dinosaur? Or will some of us survive? If so, how many of us will live through this thing? And could it even be the best thing that ever happened to the global south and other poor countries? Well, first of all... Um, Given the characteristics of nuclear weapons and nuclear fallout, we will not go extinct like the movie On the Beach. Uh, you know, the fallout will dissipate unless we start building uh, cobalt jacketed weapons, which we are not. Uh, on the other hand, certainly uh, nuclear war will not be as trivial as the New York Public Service uh, announcement on nuclear emergencies uh, shows, or even as the FEMA website portrays it. The assumption is we just need to hunker down for two weeks max, and then everything will be back to normal is dangerously false. While if you hunkered down underground, say in a parkade or subway, in the core or middle floor of a reinforced concrete building far enough from the detonation, uh, that you will not be cremated or crushed under debris or have your lungs ruptured by the overpressure, you will survive the initial effects of the detonation and ensuing fallout. However, once you emerge, long-term survival will be a significant challenge, especially in regards to finding food and medical care. The initial aftermath of an all-out nuclear war between NATO and the Russian Federation will leave countries uh, involved utterly in ruins. You know, an estimated initial death toll, about 360 million in the first few weeks from blast, thermal energy, and radiation, with tens of millions dying from lack of medical care due to the many destroyed hospitals, with the few surviving hospitals and doctors overwhelmed by hundreds of millions of severely injured and radiation-sick patients. For example, there are only 2,000 burn beds in all of the United States of America. A lot of those will be destroyed because they're in medical centers in the middle of cities. They'll be hit. And so assuming there's half of them are destroyed, but even none of them are destroyed, 2,000 burn beds will not be like uh, anywhere deal with the uh, millions of third-degree burn uh, victims they will have. In Hiroshima, for example, 90% of the hospitals were destroyed. 90% of the doctors were killed. The surviving hospitals and doctors were overrun with horribly injured and burned patients, and medical supplies quickly ran out. Um, the hospitals were surrounded by dead who died before they could see a doctor. And I want to point out that the most realistic portrayal of a collapsed medical system is the hospital scene from the British nuclear war movie Threads. In the case of a nato russia uh, nuclear war, the scene will repeat in every major city and near every major uh, military installation in the surrounding towns and all the countries hit. Add to this tragedy, those with minor injuries, dying of radiation sickness due to trekking through the fallout while seeking medical care rather than uh, hunkering down. More tragic, while well, those will die following the so-called civil defense advice published by their respective governments, which is more designed to prevent panic by creating a false sense of security, like that elderly couple in the graphic novel and movie When the Wind Blows. As for the fallout, those in the path of the fallout plume who have not found shelter with sufficient protection factor will die a horrible death from radiation sickness, which at the lower end of the lethal dose uh, can take weeks to die from. Simply staying inside or even in the basement of a wood frame house will not save them. Those that do manage to survive the radiation sickness will have severe ongoing chronic health problems and will likely develop cancer a few years down the road. Uh, and with no medical treatment available for their cancer due to the lack of sophisticated medical centers or anti-cancer drugs because the infrastructure is gone. People with pre-existing medical conditions are developing a non-radiation-induced condition, such as developing diabetes or yeah, high blood pressure or whatnot that requires modern medicine to treat and manage, will be in the same boat, and they will end up dying uh, preventable deaths. Essentially, modern medicine as we know it will cease to exist, and we'll be back to a level of medicine practiced around the year 1900, with a life expectancy dropping to a similar level. Hundreds of millions more will die of starvation and disease due to the destruction of the food supply chain, the irradiation of farmland, lack of fuel and fertilizers for our automated agriculture, destruction of sanitation and water supply infrastructures, rotting corpses, and temperature drops. This will be very pronounced in the first few years or even the first decade, but will level out as the population decreases to the number able to be supported by manual agriculture and animal husbandry as well as hunting and fishing. During that first year, though, the die-off will be extreme from the aforementioned costs, especially those living in the ruins of their cities or as refugees attempting to flee to the countryside. 
to the collapse of law and order, uh, many will also die of violence, either at the hands of country folk defending their dwindling resources or at the hands of looters and roving criminal gangs, especially in a heavily armed country like the U.S., which is going to be a total sh uh, Wild West-style shooting gallery. While the population of new countries will drop dramatically, uh, maybe as much as 90% due to, uh, due to the widespread literacy, 92% in the USA, 99 in Canada, 99 in the UK, and so forth, and widespread ownership of books, as well as a myriad of public and school libraries in rural communities, uh, and uh, also community colleges in the rural areas, as well as hospitals, we will not suffer the dramatic loss of knowledge that the fall of the Roman Empire caused. Because back then, there was only 15% of people were literate, and books in any form were extremely rare. Uh, certainly, the loss of urban-centered infrastructure will make it difficult to maintain our technically advanced civilization in the ensuing decades. The knowledge that underpins, that underpins that civilization will not be lost. So once the population stabilizes to a sustainable level, and we actually can now... Uh, start growing enough food to support ourselves, uh, whatever population is left, that we don't have to be running around trying to hunt and gather. We can start focusing on rebuilding our civilization and the knowledge will be there. So our recovery to pre-nuclear war uh, level of civilization here in the West will be at the matter of most a century, and maybe even just some decades, not the thousand years it took from the collapse of the Roman Empire to the Renaissance. Some infrastructure will even survive outside the target areas, including power generation facilities such as wind, solar, and hydroelectric. Even the worst case EMP strike would likely leave northern Canada and Alaska unscathed. Um, while this collapse of the supply chain and destruction of industry located in the target area uh, uh, will cause like major issues for us. Educated and imaginative human beings have shown in the past and will show again in the future that we will find workarounds and create domestic alternatives to imports similar to what you already see nowadays in heavily sanctioned nations such as Cuba and Iran. However, the West and the Russian Federation will not recover its economic power or military power and be reduced to status of an average developing nation. You know, think of Costa Rica or Kenya, for example. That's what the level will be at. However, the rest of the world is going to be in much better shape. Uh, there are industrial nations that will be either unaffected or only mildly affected. Brazil is currently the 11th largest economy. India is the fifth largest economy. And if India is smart enough not to have a go at Pakistan uh, and has no nuclear war, it will come away relatively unscathed. Of course, Australia, though, it may be hit if China becomes drawn into a nuclear war. These countries, along with other semi-industrialized countries, such as Argentina and South America, to name a few, uh, uh, South Africa, pardon me, to name a few, will take up the slack and expand their industrial base to produce anything they can no longer get from the US, EU, or Russia. Though these, those nations are dependent on outside food aid, such as those in the sub-Sahara will suffer white French salmon, uh, famine and disease. In some ways, uh, these countries will be better off uh, since their crushing debt to the West, including the IMF and World Bank, will literally be vaporized along with those institutions' offices that hold those debts. Nor will the profits from resources be siphoned off from multinational corporations based on major U.S. and NATO cities, since they're going to be lying in ruins. A bonus, they also don't have to worry about being bombed or regime changed by NATO when they dare assert their own sovereignty and try and control their own destiny. So while there will be a difficult period lasting a number of years, maybe even decades for them due to the loss of their suppliers and collapse of the supply chain, they will learn to produce what was once they imported or find domestic alternatives. That's, that they can do this is best exemplified by seeing how Iran grew from domestic uh, grew a domestic industrial base and in R&D facilities from literally nothing due to the harsh sanctions. And Cuba is another classic example of ingenuity as they become a nation of MacGyvers due to the, the also being under uh, harsh sanctions. These unaffected countries will eventually reestablish communication spurts with each other and with the affected areas, as well as later on be able to provide some humanitarian aid and medical help uh, to the uh, nuked areas. If China has managed to stay out of the NATO-Russia nuclear war, then recovery would be far quicker given their immense industrial and uh, based large uh, merchant fleet and significant R&D capacity and you know, just the overall size of their economy. As I said, this is not to say the first few years, even a few decades will not be miserable and see a very significant die-off. It will not be the end of the world or even the end of civilization. So the NATO countries and the Russian Federation will likely become the new third world and will never recover their former power, wealth, and influence with India and Brazil becoming the new superpowers.
Now, but what about nuclear winter? Isn't that supposed to kill 5 billion people, including 99% of the population in the Northern Hemisphere? Well, even then, there still leaves another 3 billion of us around, so in the South. You know, and there is compelling evidence that contradicts Carl Sagan's models, uh, 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 such as a significantly less drop in temperature from the Kuwait oil fire oil well fires back in the original Gulf War uh, than what's predicted by his model, as well as the positive impact of lower yield weapons. Nowadays, our nukes are run from 150 to 800 kilotons on average, as opposed to the multi megaton weapons of the 60s and 70s. You know, we will have a drop in temperature. But it may only be a tenth of what Sagan predicted, uh, which would be about the same level as a very cold uh, summerless year in 536 AD. <laughs> While that was not trivial, civilization did survive, and um, and uh, even and although there was famine and there was disease uh, because of collapse of agriculture, but still there was enough agriculture to keep the rest of the population alive. So it's not going to be the apocalyptic kill off 99% of us only leaving uh, cannibals uh, running around, uh, nor will it trigger a new ice age uh, with 5 billion dead worldwide. Although realistically, I, I can see us losing a billion or two dead um, over the course of the first decade after the nuclear war. In any case, I'm going to be doing a detailed video uh, looking at the uh, nuclear winter, the, basically the the, the apocalyptic theory of it and basically evidence to, that contradicts the apocalyptic uh, vision of it. Uh, in any case, regardless, we're still going to lose 360 million dead in the first couple of weeks and at least a billion, maybe even two billion dead over the next few years and de or decade uh, due to the destruction of infrastructure and supply chain, destruction of farm, farmland, disease, radiation sickness, and people dying of otherwise treatable disease and injuries due as well as starvation and violence. I'm going to end this by recommending that everybody watch the British nuclear war movies, Threads, which I feel is probably the most realistic portrayal of the aftermath of nuclear war in the UK, which probably has more targets relative to its land area than any place outside of uh, Oahu. So please comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you, and bye for now.